For processes that occur at constant pressure, the change in enthalpy delta H equals the heat transferred Q. Delta H is positive for endothermic processes and negative for exothermic processes. The change in enthalpy for a reaction depends on the substances in the reaction and their states of matter. Consider the dissolution of a chunk of the generic ionic compound MN2 in water. Here M indicates metal and N indicates nonmetal. This could be, for example, calcium chloride, where the metal ion calcium would have a 2 plus charge and each chloride ion, there being two of them, would each have a negative 1 charge. There are three enthalpy components that together make up the change in enthalpy of the solution process. And here they are. Firstly, the solvent molecules pull the ions out of the lattice. We have this solid chunk of ionic compound and we can imagine the water molecules, say, having to pull out each calcium ion, each chloride ion. They pull them out one by one. So I've got a picture here. You can see we're pulling these ions out of the lattice. The next thing that happens is that the solvent molecules, like the water, have to separate to make space. So there's room for a surrounded ion to fit in. Once we've pulled an ion out of the lattice, we now have to make space. The ion has to push its way into the water, so the water molecules have to separate a bit in order that the ion will fit in there. You can see this picture. We've got a young lady who's pushing her way through a crowd. It takes energy to do that. Thirdly, intermolecular forces between solvent molecules and ions cause the ions to nestle in with solvent molecules all around. In other words, once the ion is completely surrounded by water molecules, then there is a release of energy as the ion settles in with the water molecules surrounding it in a particular orientation. On the left side of the screen, you might guess that in order to pull ions out of the lattice, we have to input some energy. There's an energy input associated with that. Similarly, when the ion pushes its way into the crowd having to push aside those water molecules, there's also energy that has to be input in order for that to happen. For the third step, there's an energy release as these ions nestle in with solvent molecules all around. The relative magnitude of these three enthalpy components determines the overall change in enthalpy of the solution process and, obviously, its sign, positive or negative. Depending on the magnitudes of H1 and H2, both of which are positive, compared to H3, which is negative, that's going to determine the overall enthalpy of the solution process. Heats of solution for many solids in aqueous solution have been tabulated and are easily accessed. And here are a few. I don't see any need for you to write these down, but you can see. Sometimes when we mix a substance with water, energy is absorbed and sometimes it's released. In particular, you might note here, I'm going to circle these in the lower left corner, you can see that we have nitric acid right there and hydrochloric acid. And if you look at the heats of solution, you can see that there is a net release of energy. This is why whenever you are mixing an acid with water, you want to start with a large quantity of water and then add your acid in so that that large quantity of water is available to absorb the heat that is released. This is why we add acid to water and not water into acid. Something that you might have used in a high school chemistry laboratory up here at the top of the table, ammonium nitrate, which is commonly added to water solution and that as you might remember, gets very cold. 
and here you can see that there is a net energy input in that solution process.